All right, I'm going to go over the basics of Lab 3A, which you'll be completing at home. First of all, I'm assuming you have pretty much all of the materials you'll need at home. If you don't, just let me know and I can lend you some. So we start out with an exercise where we're measuring the thickness of a penny, and the thickness is this tiny little bit of the penny, okay? So um, it is a really small uh, property to measure, okay? As you're measuring, you're measuring on the centimeter scale, which means if that's my centimeter, right, I have 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay, not evenly spaced, but 10 markings in between, each of those is a millimeter, okay? If I measure the thickness of my penny, so uh, my penny is somewhere in this region, thickness, right? I notice it's lying somewhere in between one and two millimeters. So I'm gonna have to estimate that last digit, okay? So you should have something like point something, one, two, okay, and centimeters, and then one more estimated digit, so point one, three centimeters maybe, okay? So you should have to the tenth place in measuring centimeters for each of your measurements here. So after you, now you go on to measure the thickness of four coins and then seven and then 10 coins, okay? And you'll notice uh, it gets a little bit easier, okay? When there's more coins, it's a little easier to handle. So again, top, bottom, all right, you'll have a measurement to the tenths place in centimeters, okay? Your book mention, or your lab mentions using a transparent ruler. As you can see, you can use an opaque one, and again, if you need to borrow one, just let me know. Uh, the kind of penny you use, you use shouldn't matter for this first activity. All right, for the next activity, it tells you to measure the length and width of the cover of your lab manual. Uh, since you don't have a lab manual, just go ahead and use this lab uh, worksheet as the thing that you measure. Again, measure in centimeters, and you don't have to start right at zero, okay? Just take the difference between these ends, okay? It's going to be a little bit easier for you. So length and width in centimeters. Again, your ruler measures to the millimeter mark, and then you estimate one more digit. So your answer should be somewhere in the, or should have all the way out to the uh, hundredth of a centimeter in terms of digits. The next activity requires the use of the lab balance. So you will need to do this in class, either uh, before or after school. It should not take long. Okay, first off, this is what the triple beam balance looks like. And actually we've got four beams on ours. Um, You'll notice over here that the balance is not zeroed. In order to zero it, you're gonna twist this knob, okay? If you make it tighter and closer in, uh, it's gonna cause um, the, the arm to move down, and as you twist it out, it's gonna cause the arm to move up. Okay, so first thing is make sure this is perfectly zeroed, and I have a close-up of that, so it's a little bit faint, but as you can see, these lines measure, or sorry, they line up exactly. That means it's zeroed. Okay, once you've got your uh, balance zeroed, you can add the penny to the tray, and again, you're only measuring the mass of one penny at first, and then you move each of the um, movers, okay, until you get it back to where you're balanced over here. So now, this for this particular example, I didn't actually get it to zero, um, but I'm going to show you how to read your, whoops, I'm going to show you how to read the balance once you have it zeroed out, okay? You're going to take each of these guys and add them up, all right? You shouldn't be moving the ones in the back. This is uh, for hundreds of grams, and then this one's for tens of grams. Um, penny is not going to be uh, 10 grams, so those actually will stay the same for this exercise. This is the one you'll need, and this is not actual, okay? So you don't want to use my data here, um, but you would add. This is a 2, okay? And then you would read down here. Um, I, my smallest markings are the point zero zero ones place, okay? 
each of these tiny markings in here, these little ones are in this 0 0.01 place. That means I'm going to estimate one more digit. So my final answer, final answer should have three decimal places. D E C I M A L. Three decimal places. Okay, so something here. All right. One thing to note, you want to try and use pennies from different years, and I'll go ahead and give you the hint. Try and use some from before 1982 and some from after 1982, and then if you happen to have any from 1982, that's a good year as well. The last step of the experiment involves measuring some water. Okay, so it asks you to fill up a test tube with water, and here's your test tube, and then pour it into your graduated cylinder. And when you pour it into your graduated cylinder, you get something that looks like this. And you'll notice there's a slight curve in the way the water sits in the graduated cylinder. That's called the meniscus, okay? And you're gonna read at the bottom of the meniscus. All right, you'll notice this graduated cylinder, the markings are at, in the ones place. That means you're estimating one more digit to the tenths place. So you should have one digit after the decimal for any graduated cylinder readings. Now, if you are un unable to borrow this from me or do this in uh, class after or before school, you may do it at home. Use uh, not a test tube, but any other um, something that you can fill up multiple times. And then for your measurement, instead of the graduated cylinder, you can use just a regular old measuring cup, but you're gonna make sure you use the milliliters, okay? So here, notice that the smallest markings are not one milliliter, but in fact, they are in 25s, okay? So that means that the, uh, sm the, the last place that you can measure exactly is the tens, oh, I'm sorry, that's not correct. The last place you can measure exactly is the 100s place. So then you're estimating in the tens place. Okay, so you should have no ones place or any decimals for sure if you're using this kind of measuring cup. As you're completing this lab, what I want you to keep in mind are these ideas, both precision and significant digits, and then the difference between measurement and calculations, okay? Measurement is what you observe. Calculations are what you do with those observations, but you have to obey the significant digit rules with both, okay? So obey the significant digit rules either way, okay? You can review those in your textbook if you are not sure about them. All right, once you complete the discussion questions and calculations at the end, you are done. Please feel free to email me anytime or send me a message on Edmodo if you have any questions at all about this lab. All right, happy labbing, lab rats.